Hello team and welcome back to the channel. So before starting the video, a small request, please subscribe to the channel. We upload videos on daily basis or at least we try to. Also one more thing I should say to you, uh, I have a telegram channel where we have around 350 plus members. I would request you to join that group. The reason that I ask you, first of all, I have kept my telegram group many to many. That means everyone can send messages to that. To that okay. Also, if you are having any issues, queries or any questions, you can just ask there. I am very active on the telegram group and I am definitely going to answer it. Okay. Also, if you are having any specific topic you want a video to be made on, that also you can just mention in my telegram group and I will try to make a video on it. Okay. So link will be in the description. You can just uh, uh, join my group from there. Okay. Now coming to today's topic. So recently I saw lots of videos with title that there is no coding required in DevOps and DevOps is very easy like that. Okay. So see this kind of things create misconception that uh, DevOps is very easy and thinking that people are literally switching without like understanding what exactly is DevOps and uh, how much like effort and how much coding is required. Okay. So that I that it, that is like like not so good like saying ki just uh, there is no coding in DevOps. So basically what I'm going to do now is explain you how much coding is required in which sections coding is required. What kind of coding is required if the coding is hard or easy everything I will explain you in detail. Okay. So that if you are switching to DevOps or if you are planning to uh, like uh, come to DevOps as a DevOps engineer then you should be having enough knowledge about DevOps coding. Okay what kind of coding is required and how much coding is required okay so that will be really useful for you so make sure to watch this video till end because i will explain in very detail so that you can understand everything okay so with that being said let's get started okay team so coming to the most important question is coding really needed in devops yes it is needed and definitely needed okay but the thing is key as compared to developers coding in devops is little bit easier okay easier only if you are practicing enough and if you are doing a good job okay so that becomes easier also like one more thing i would say ki as compared to developer for example developer is there they will learn java they will start working with uh, spring boot and any, any other tool to build a project right but in case of devops we need to learn multiple languages coding okay not programming languages but uh, languages different languages like uh, groovy yaml and like uh, bash scripting those kind of things we need to learn okay so starting with the first topic which is CI CD CI CD continuous integration continuous deployment which is the backbone of DevOps right. So talking about Jenkins which is one of the most used CI CD tool for writing pipelines okay. So in CI CD basically what we do we write pipelines for building and deployment of application right. So if we consider the example of Jenkins we write pipelines in Jenkins in the language of Groovy okay. So Groovy is the language in which we write pipelines in Jenkins. And frankly speaking, uh, since I have written lots of pipelines, so at this point, it becomes easier for me. Okay, I would say ki how it is easier as compared to other programming languages, because there is a proper pattern in when we write pipelines in uh, Jenkins. Okay, because uh, like uh, there is a structure which you need to understand how pipeline is written. Once you understand the structure, then writing pipeline in Groovy for Jenkins is much, much, much easier. Okay. So for me, it's like ki I can write pipelines, long pipelines and very big pipelines because I have written and practiced too much. Okay. So uh, for Jenkins, I would say groovy language we use for writing pipelines. So you need to understand. Basically, you just need to understand the structure of a pipeline. Okay. Then you can easily write. Okay. Coming to next thing, which is uh, Azure. Okay. So when we write our Azure pipelines for building and deployment, there we use YAML language. Okay. So YAML language is sort of like key pair values. Okay. There is like one one word will be there which is will be which will be the key colon then after that you will write the value of that key okay so frankly speaking like you writing uh, yaml pipelines for azure that also like once you write one or two times it will become much easier okay so writing pipelines uh, that can be done in usually like uh, uh, groovy if you are using jenkins and yaml yaml can be used for multiple uh, multiple like ci cd tools most common is azure devops okay so First place where we need to uh, learn coding is uh, Groovy script for writing pipelines in Jenkins plus YAML in uh, for writing uh, pipelines in Azure DevOps. Okay, and frankly speaking, from my experience, uh, two three times you just write pipelines, you will understand how it is written, how how is the structure. Okay, now coming to the second place where we write pipelines. Okay, okay, 
So the next place where we need to learn little bit of coding for writing things is the IAC, which is infrastructure as code. Okay. So you might already know that we use Terraform to provision an infrastructure and multiple resources. Okay. So we need to understand how to write Terraform script so that we can provision resources and manage our infrastructure, right? Okay. I have written like a Terraform script for AWS as well as Azure. Okay. So frankly speaking, like uh, you just need to write a Terraform script one time. Okay. Why I say that? Because there is a pattern in that Terraform script because like you need to understand there are three things like uh, what kind of resource you will create. Uh, like, sorry, the kind of things that you are creating, for example, resource, then we will be writing the uh, type of resource. For example, we are creating AWS instance. Okay. So we will write resource. Then in quotes, we will write uh, AWS instance. Then in other quotes, we will write uh, name of the instance that we want to provide. Okay. And then in colon, we will provide the properties. Okay. So this is the basic understanding that I, I, I know about uh, Terraform. Ki, okay. This is the format in which I need to go. Okay. So that means uh, from my experience, I would tell you ki, for Terraform, if just you write one time a Terraform script forever, you will understand how it works and how it is written. Okay. And that is the main thing. So Terraform script also, uh, it, it seem, it may seem uh, hard initially. But one or two time if you write, it will be becoming much, much easier for you. Okay. But obviously for Terraform also, uh, you need to learn uh, the, uh, this, like we, we write this script in the files dot tf files. Okay. So that, that format language, uh, that format, like writing the uh, uh, tf files, we need to understand how we need to write Terraform scripts. Okay. So that is also one form of coding that we need to understand in IAC infrastructure as code because we use Terraform for management of our uh, management and provisioning of our infra infrastructure, right? So uh, as I told that also will become easier if you just write one or two times because there is a proper pattern for Terraform scripts. Okay. Coming to the next thing we have uh, configuration management. Okay. So in configuration management, when we talk about configuration management, what exactly we mean is like we are going to automate things using uh, like configuration tools. For example, most common is Ansible puppet. Okay. So uh, for Ansible, see in, in case of Ansible, what we do, we write playbooks, okay. Playbooks are also written in the form of YAML, okay. So, but again, like for writing y uh, play, uh, YAML playbooks for Ansible, we need to understand the structure because YAML, I explained you YAML, the main point that you need to understand in YAML is the key value pair. It is, it is basically a key value pair thing, thing okay. And in case of Ansible, there is a proper structure because again, like uh, I said, like a format, you need to understand the uh, script format. So for Ansible playbook, we need to understand like the, how a playbook is written, right? Once you understand that format, once you, once you understand, uh, once you write one or two playbooks, then it will become much easier. Then it will be like, key. you just need to like, uh, uh, replace thing or edit a file. Okay. Usually, uh, yeah, like initially we used to write the uh, Ansible scripts manually everything. But at this point, it's like, key, we will take uh, any already existing our uh, script. We will edit it based on requirement, we will just edit it and then we will use it. Okay. So for Ansible also, once you uh, start writing one or two files, you will understand the format and how it is written uh, and then you will be able to write. Okay. So again, uh, this is the third thing that you need to understand in DevOps of writing code. Okay. First is Groovy script, then YAML, YAML language for writing Azure DevOps pipelines. Then third, we will be having Terraform script, how to write Terraform scripts format you need to understand. Fourth. Ansible playbook, how need, how we need to write. Okay. So these four are the initial things. Now let, let me explain you uh, other places where we need to write the uh, coding line, uh, where we need to know the coding for writing different scripts and all. Okay. So let me explain. Okay. So next place why, uh, where like we need to uh, write coding, uh, we need to know the uh, uh, like knowledge of coding is uh, monitoring and logging things. Okay. For example, in most projects, we have Grafana and Prometheus for monitoring purpose. Okay. Let's say we are having an application up and running and we want to monitor it properly. So for monitoring using Grafana, we need to write queries. Okay. If you have worked with Grafana, you should know this. Okay. We write uh, like some queries, which will give, give us the results. Okay. Then we can like use a dashboard and all to view the results. Okay. But basic thing is okay, we need to understand how to write queries. So basically from, for me, like I did, I, 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 I like, uh, I have not written too many queries, but, ba but basic queries I know. And I guess key, like a few queries, if you write, then you will understand how it is written. Okay. So basically for writing queries in Grafana, we use a language known as PromQL or LogQL. Okay. 
depending on what data source is using for example we are using prometheus you might already know prometheus is a data source for fetching the uh, data from uh, an application running okay so that we can con convert that data into visualization visual format using grafana okay so for fetching the data we use uh, uh, promql which is prometheus query language okay other thing we if you are using loki we can uh, we can use the language logql okay so for me i i think it is li li little bit of like hard but uh, not too much hard since uh, since i did not write too many queries but uh, once you start writing you will understand okay so this is like this is the uh, thing that we use uh, this is the kind of basic coding uh, query language coding we need to know uh, so that we can fetch the uh, like uh, uh, data um, uh, for monitoring purpose using grafana and prometheus okay okay so finally we have automation tasks okay so basically you know like in case of bash script uh, in case of devops we have bash shell scripting as well as python scripting okay so these tools these tools we can uh, these languages we can use to write uh, scripts for automating different tasks okay for example like uh, if you want to take backup of something if you want to copy certain files uh, at certain instance or something these kind of tasks we can perform using uh, scripts okay so scripts uh, like three 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 languages scripts are available which is bash scripting then we have uh, shell scripting then we have python scripting okay so most like most widely used is shell scripting and python scripting based on your understanding you can learn uh, any one of them and you can start like writing the uh, automation scripts okay now coming to uh, thinking if it is hard or easy okay so from my experience i would say if you are using python or shell any one of them if you are not practicing enough then it will become really hard because like scripting is kind of hard because uh, it performs a lot of important tasks automation and other things so uh, from my experience if you are not practicing it on daily basis or like uh, on regular basis using python or shell whichever language you want you want to use then it will become hard but uh, if you are practicing on daily basis or regular basis it will be really easy okay for me like i used to practice a lot so at this point i am able to write lots of like uh, scripts okay so these are the main things that uh, you need to understand uh, coding for devops okay so next time if someone says you uh, like uh, uh, defame you ki uh, devops people do not write code tell them ki we write code in multiple languages okay and frankly speaking this coding as compared to developer from my experience because uh, initially i have worked as like uh, for java language like i used to work with java language using spring boot and uh, like writing uh, in working in a project okay so as compared to that i feel still uh, even though we are like uh, working with multiple languages still it's for me it seems easier than that okay because uh, there is a proper format and pattern is there in devops for writing codes okay so coding is uh, definitely there in devops but it is easier as compared to programming languages from my experience okay so that's pretty much about today's video and i hope this uh, made some things clear for you that coding is definitely there in devops and uh, we need to practice practice will make everything easier that is for sure but next time please do not uh, uh, do not just fall into a trap ki there is no coding in devops and we just we, we just work very easily in devops okay so thanks for watching and have a nice day and if you have not subscribed please subscribe it helps me a lot so good night and have a nice day